What's going on guys? 2015 F-150. We're at it again. I swear this truck gets more action than my wife. But uh, today's video we're going to be doing the Sync 3 upgrade. Don't mind those turbos there. That's for another video. But uh, yep. So we're going to do the Sync 3 upgrade and I'm going to do the best I can to try to make a complete video guide on how to do this. I, um, you know, I spent a lot of time. The, the information is out there. It's just kind of scattered everywhere. So in this video, I'm trying to help everyone that hasn't done this and wants to do it, kind of a complete guide on how to do it. So 2015 F-150, it's got the My4 Touch, aka Sync 2, piece of crap. Um, it, it, you know, serves its purpose. Um, if you guys follow my videos, you've seen a lot of my stereo upgrades. Um, so, you know, I got it where I want it, but, uh, this is kind of the next step. Um, I'm a, I'm a believer of hands off while driving, you know, instead of playing with my phone, I'm only 31 years old, but as you get up in age, you can't juggle the two. So this is all around a safer and, and better, you know, way to do it. I like, uh, you know, I like using Google maps. So, um, you know, this is an easier way to do it instead of holding my phone and ultimately you get the purest sound from your stereo because Android Auto will route the audio through the USB connection. So that's a win-win. Um, anyways, uh, we're going to start with the, uh, the screen here. This is the APIM, the module. Um, if you have a Sync 3 and you want to upgrade to the uh, navigation or whatever, you know, you'll, you'll buy a new one of these. Um, I have a 8 inch screen in my truck already. Unfortunately, it does not work with the Sync 3. So when you are doing this upgrade, you're going to have to get a screen along with the module. Um, and I will say that there is three versions of these, I believe, um, that are uh, the three newest versions, I guess you can say. Maybe in 2018 this started. Don't quote me on that. But um, Sync 3 started, I think, late 2016. Um, I've read several people having, you know, issues with freezing and all that, kind of 16 and 17. But 18 and 19, this actually came out of a um, Mustang, I think, maybe 2019 vehicle anyways. But I'll post um, in the description the uh, version number because I think there's three versions of this APIM um, that you can get that works with the setup that I'm about to show you. Um, so this is a non-navigation unit. I think I picked this up on eBay for like eh, in the neighborhood of 230 somewhere in there. So I think that's a good deal for the module and the screen. Brand new, you know, it was a factory takeout pretty much still has the screen protector on it. Um, but again, you know, I use Google Maps. I don't know why anyone in the world would use the built-in navigation on any vehicle when you have Google Maps. You know, it's like you can't compare it. But uh, to each their own. Anyways, so this is the non-navigation unit, um, and you know, brand new screen. But this module, this 2019, it lets me use um, the USB-C. This is the new one, uh, the new the USB hub. So you're going to need this. You're going to need a new USB hub. You're going to need a GPS antenna, even if my, even if yours is non-GPS, you still need this for whatever reason. And you're going to need a adapter harness, which plugs into the back of the USB. Um, so you'll remove your USB, plug that in, and then plug this into the back. Um, that USB gets reused, and then this is the adapter harness, so you can get power. Um, and that's why I recommend uh, getting the newer version because uh, the one with the USB-C here is uh, an updated version. It is supposed to um, charge your phone uh, faster, so it has fast charging capabilities. I don't know the exact specifications on that. Stable, so more current. I guess some guys were having some issues when they connected the Android Auto or Apple CarPlay with it kind of freezing up or stuttering. And this has more throughput, so it's a USB 3.1, I believe. Um, so that's a plus. I recommend if you're going to do this, might as well you know shoot for this so you don't run into any of those issues down the road. Not to say 
that they even exist. I'm just going off of what a lot of people say on the forums. So that's pretty much it, what you're going to need for this. Um, you know, the APIM, the module, the screen, the harness, the USB, and the GPS. And after we get this installed, I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen a bunch of these videos, but I'm going to, I'm going to record myself swapping this in. That's the easy part. The next step is the programming, and that's what steers a lot of people away from this. But um, I've done my research, and I hope to... Uh, nail it down for you guys. It looks pretty straightforward, so I'm gonna make a video on exactly how and why and what you know to do the uh, reprogram. And basically, what you have to do is, when you get a module, say this is out of a Mustang, um, it's gonna be a little bit different on the infotainment than obviously my F-150. I may have some stuff or not have some stuff that my truck doesn't have. So what we need to do is we need to program this to replicate what should be in my truck so it can correctly display um, what should be in a you know F-150 of that year. So um, one of the things is we need to get a VIN number, which you can find on eBay, and I'll show you how, you know, what I'm going to do. Mine's a 2015 XLT, so I'm going to try to find like a 2018 or 2019 XLT with Sync 3, um, non-navigation, and uh, if that matters, but, you know, Sync 3 that year, and I'm going to go to the website, uh, which I'll show you, download the as-built data, and load it onto this. And then it should work fine. So that's what I got for you now. And uh, about to pull the truck in. It's a nice Florida day. Just sprinkled a little bit so it's nice and humid. So I'm going to try to pull the truck in and get cracking on it. Stand by. All right, so we got the SYNC 2 out next to the new SYNC 3, and it looks like we're going to have to swap the brackets over. Uh, looks pretty straightforward, so I'm going to attempt to do that right now. And I did uh, want to use this time to also mention that there are, uh, I guess, two versions of this. There's a flat and a recessed, so I'm going to try to find um, the literature that I found online, and I'll post that. that says kind of the vehicles that have the recess and the vehicles that have the flat screen so you know which one you need when you go to purchase one of these so I thought I'd say that but okay we're gonna um, attempt to swap the brackets now and then continue on with the install
and just stuck mine right in there. I'm going to show you the USB. So just stick a pry bar on one side and pull it out. And the one that I have right here, they actually make a different version um, that's wider. That's why you see this piece of plastic that I got around mine. Uh, the one that I need is actually like two and a half inches. This is about an inch and three quarter or so. So I just made a piece of trim plastic to go all the way around it because this one was $50 and the one for my truck was like twice as much and it was back ordered. So uh, I just picked this one up, should work just fine. Everything is the same except for the face. So if you uh, want to do this, you know, since it's never going to be seen, you can do that or you can, uh, you know, hopefully pick it up for a little cheaper than what I found it for. But uh, yep, so um, we're going to go ahead and swap the USBs out now. And that is it for the hardware install. So now we are going to move in to the software install. So starting from the beginning, when you go to Forescan, it's forescan.org. Forescan.org. It'll bring you up to this. You'll go. Um, Find the download that you need. Um, let's see, products. Right here, hit products. Then you can find the version, that the latest version for Windows. Download that. Then you'll click get free extended license. And that will um, lead you to the next page, which you have to create an account. Like I said, you'll receive an email. It'll say it's active. So in that email, you'll, it, it provides instructions on what you need to do. Basically, it uh, gives you a link. You type in um, um, some information. You download it, and then you load it onto Forescan. Um, and what that does is that enables your um, license. So when you hit About, this information right here, see how it says Extended License? Um, so that will be the screen that you'll load it in and then uh, you'll be good to go after that. So when we get into Forescan, um, I didn't mention earlier, but you need a, uh, a OBD2 to USB and I'll link the one that I used. Um, it has a, a toggle switch on it, uh, which loads the different modules. So when we open up Forescan, we're going to click this one right here. Uh, well, actually, it'll be the first one, and you'll connect it. Hit this button right here. It'll say connect to vehicle. It'll load everything, um, and then you'll hit this one right here. It'll show all the modules, and you'll see the um, the APIM. It'll say APIM as built right here. That's the one you'll click on, and then we'll load all the values from the um, the document that we looked up online with the VIN that matches our truck as close as possible. And that's all it is. Uh, once you transfer all the values, you'll hit write all. It'll you know prompt you a few things. You'll hit OK. It'll load all the new values and it'll say complete. 
turn uh, cycle the key off you'll turn it off let it completely shut down uh, whatever it is a minute or two uh, before it completely shuts off and then when you start up your vehicle again it will uh, load all those values and you should be good to go so okay this part of the video I've got my as-built data that we um, got offline pulled up in one window and then I have my four scan running in the other window here and I clicked on the APIM module, the as-built format. These all loaded up. Make sure you save your original, which is right there. Save all, create a profile, uh, save original. And now we are going to type in these values into this area. So pretty straightforward, the four scan. Um, most important thing is just... Um, saving your original and you know if anything ever got messed up you just go to that website that i showed you uh you'll type in your vim your vin it'll load all your asbel data and you just transfer you just transfer it you know if something gets messed up so not that big of a deal just um make sure when you're transferring the new values that you're you know copying the same lines and you should be good to go so that's it for the software side hope this video helped um, if you're doing the Sync 3 upgrade, um, I, you know, the 4Scan thing to me was a little bit um, question mark. You know, I, I, I didn't know all the ins and outs of it, but it's pretty straightforward once you do it. So it's just a matter of downloading it, getting the license, finding the, the as-built data, and then transferring it, and you should be good to go. So again, hope this video helps. If you guys got any more questions, let me know. Thanks.